Do you want to install a hardwired smart video doorbell, but do not have an existing wire transformer or chime? Or perhaps you already have an existing doorbell system and just wondering how it works, what your power requirements are. We're gonna be covering all of this and more in today's video, as well as installing your own system starting from scratch. I am not a licensed electrician. This is for demonstration purposes only. Always consult your local electrical authority and code, and when in doubt, always hire a licensed electrician. Wired smart video doorbells are designed to run off of a home's doorbell power system. However, not all houses have a traditional doorbell, and some that do may not be strong enough to power a camera. So how does a traditional doorbell system work? Regular household power goes into a device called a transformer, which steps the power down to a lower voltage. From there, one wire goes to the doorbell button and the other side goes to the chime. This is what makes the ding dong sound. Then from the other side of the button to the chime. When the button is pressed, it connects the wires and makes a complete circuit, which activates the chime. Some systems have a second doorbell button for a back or a side door. This would be set up in the same way and would have a separate terminal in the chime for the secondary button. And often they have a different sound tone to tell them apart. Let's start with the main component, the transformer, and no, not the ones from Cybertron. A transformer converts your normal household power, which is approximately 110 to 120 volts, at least here in North America, and it brings it down to a much lower voltage, usually around 16 to 24 volts. Since these come in a variety of different power outputs, the most important thing is to spec your transformer to your specific video doorbell requirements. There are two main numbers on a transformer. The first is voltage. This one is 16 VAC, which stands for volts in alternating current. The second number here is 10 VA, which stands for volt amperes, which is loosely equivalent to watts. Technically speaking, volt ampere refers to the apparent power and watts are measured as the real power. Both are simply the voltage multiplied by the amperage. If that sounds too technical, don't worry about it. You don't need to understand all that. We are basically just matching numbers here. We're gonna be installing this Casa video doorbell. And on the back of the box here, it says it requires between 16 and 24 VAC and a 10 VA minimum. This is the kit that we purchased. It also comes with a chime. There'll be more on that later in this video. Uh, but the transformer that comes in here has a 16 VAC and a 10 VA output. So this will work perfectly for our needs, but you can find your video doorbell specific requirements either in the instruction manual, on the box, or on the manufacturer's website. Now keep in mind, all we are powering with this transformer is going to be our video doorbell. If you are powering a video doorbell on let's say the front door and using a normal button on the back or side door that still uses the traditional chime, the chime will still need power. Or if you are powering two video doorbells. If this is the case, as long as the voltage rating is the same across all devices, you will need a transformer with a higher volt amperes rating. You can use a transformer with a higher volt amperes rating than required. It's not what it constantly outputs, it's what it can handle being drawn from it. So for example, if we had two video doorbell cameras or one traditional doorbell and video doorbell running at a minimum 10 VA each, we would want at least 20 or 30 VA to safely handle the load. If you have an existing system, you may need to locate your transformer to find out its power ratings. Uh, these can be located almost anywhere throughout the house, but they're usually found uh, near electrical panels, uh, basements, like up in the ceiling joists. They can also be in attics, can be in garages, and in some cases they can even be inside older style chimes. Please keep in mind that if you were replacing or especially upgrading an existing transformer in your house and still planning on using part of your chime or reusing it in the future to make sure that your chime has the same voltage ratings as the new transformer. If you put in a higher voltage rated transformer and a lower rated chime, you can fry the chime. So if you have to upgrade your transformer, you may also have to upgrade your chime if that's applicable. Transformers also come in multiple installation styles. Uh, this is a traditional one that gets hardwired directly into your house's electrical and gets mounted to the side of an electrical box or an electrical panel. There are also ones that plug directly into an outlet. This is a great option if you're not comfortable uh, working on your own house's electrical system. You can also find ones that are more manufacturer specific for an exact model. Some of these even come with a plug that's already pre-wired. And so all you have to do is hook up the two ends of the wires directly to your doorbell and it's basically plug and play. So do your research and figure out what your specific video doorbell requirements are and what your options are for powering it. I will also mention that if you have a battery powered smart video doorbell, some manufacturers have a way to hook it up to basically trickle charge through your home's existing doorbell system. Some of these include special power packs, transformers, or resistors. Something to keep in mind as well. Now for the chime. You do not need a traditional chime to install a video doorbell. 
and in most cases you will have to install a jumper cable in order to bypass it. The power only flows through to the chime when the doorbell button is pushed. Therefore, in order to have constant power to the doorbell button location, you would have to have the chime always on. This Casa Video Doorbell comes with a plug-in Wi-Fi connected chime. That way anyone in the house can hear when someone pushes the video doorbell. You can also hook up some of these to Alexa or Google, and they can basically announce it when someone pushes the button, as well as you hook it up to your smartphone so you can get notifications on the go. So why you might ask, would you want to install a traditional chime, even if you don't have or need one? We are choosing to install a traditional chime in our house so that we have the option in the future of removing that video doorbell and basically just reattaching an old traditional system if we move, for example. The low voltage wire. This step could be the most challenging depending on where you have to run the wire to and through depending on your space is finished and what kind of surfaces you have to go through like you have to go through a brick wall for example to get it inside and then you have drywall all the way down to the basement where you want to put the transformer it could be a lot of snaking wires back and forth we ran our low voltage wires back when we did our kitchen renovation we have purchased this 18 2 bell wire so in this case the 18 stands for the awg rating and number the number two is for the number of conductors that are in the wire itself. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge and is the US standard of measure for the diameter of electrical conductors. Our transformer specs calls for a 20 AWG minimum. And when it comes to the wire, the higher the AWG number, the lower the power rating. So 18 AWG can handle more power than 20 AWG. So it's above the minimum required in this case. Now that we know how this all works, let's start putting this all together and installing it, starting with the transformer. We're down here in the basement now. Uh, we're gonna be installing the transformer up here on the ceiling joist. This is right below the front door area, so it will keep the wire run a little bit shorter. Keep in mind, these things do produce a little bit of heat, so we wanted to keep them somewhere that's kind of fairly open as well. These are designed to be installed to electrical box using a half inch knockout. Not all boxes have knockouts. And keep in mind that knockouts come in different sizes, so make sure you get the right one. You can also mount this particular transformer using these four screw holes and then run the wire into a box using an appropriate wire clamp. After mounting the box, we ran a 14-2 wire to a nearby outlet. This circuit only has three plugs on it, so it can safely handle more load. In this case, we are just going to attach the new wires to the other side of this receptacle. Now with the power in the box, it's time to hook up the transformer and connect the wires. In this case, black goes to black, white goes to white, green goes to green. Here we also require the ground to be bonded to the box and to the device. Now it's time for the low voltage wires. We are installing the doorbell onto our existing door trim. In order to do this, we had to take off some of the vinyl siding so we could drill a hole straight into the small wall in the foyer. We then ran the wire up from the basement, pulled it through the wall, and then drilled a hole in the siding and then reinstalled it. We then drilled a hole through the wooden door trim where the doorbell will be located. Since we are installing a chime as well, we ran another wire up from the basement. Since we already had the wall open, it was a perfect time to run the low voltage wires to the new chime location. Now let's talk about the chime. The inside of most chimes will look something like this. The terminals here that are labeled are trans, front, and back. The trans gets a wire straight from one side of the transformer, and then either the front or back will get one wire going to a doorbell button. I also note there is specific instructions on the orientation in which way the chimes are installed onto the wall. If installed wrong, it could result in the chime sound not working. Now it's time to hook up the low voltage wires. So starting at the transformer, uh, polarity here does not matter, meaning you can hook it up to either side of the transformer. The way I like to look at it is the two terminals on the back, one is basically going out of the transformer and one is returning to create the entire loop. If you were just hooking up a doorbell straight, you would just run basically one wire to one side, one wire to the other, and then one wire to one side of the doorbell and one wire to the other, and that should power your video doorbell. Now in our case, we're hooking up a traditional system and then bypassing it. So in our case, we ran a red and a white wire to the chime location, a red and a white to the doorbell location, and we're gonna treat the two red wires in this case, doesn't matter, but we're gonna treat the two red wires as the in and out. 
So we're gonna hook up one to either side of the transformer. Now, when you're hooking up to the back terminals here, if you twist them in a clockwise motion before tightening the screw down, it'll actually help uh, wrap the wire around the screw and helps make a bit of a better connection. In our case, we're gonna hook up one red wire in the chime location to the trans terminal, so that's like the power in, and then to one side of the doorbell button, the red wire as well. And then the white wire is gonna get hooked up to the front door in our case in the terminal in the chime. And then the other side of the doorbell button will be the white wire there. Now in our case, because we ran them both to the transformer location, the white wire will have to be spliced together because there's gonna be two of them. So a simple wire knot will tie these together. Once the doorbell, just like traditional one is installed and pressed, the system should work as normal. As you can see, the doorbell system works as intended. So now we're gonna treat this as if we're installing in a house that already has an existing doorbell system. We know the transformer is spec right. So in this case, what we're gonna do is go back to the chime and we're gonna install a bypass wire, which is basically going to go from the trans terminal to the front door location. In this case, that's the only wire we have hooked up. And it's basically going to bypass the chime so that the way there's constant power flowing to the doorbell, and then we'll be able to go through with the actual doorbell install. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see the install and setup of our Casa Smart Video Doorbell, I'll put the video up here. Once it's uploaded, there'll also be a link in the description below. And here's another video that you might like.